Howdy folks! In this final discussion about the nervous system underpinnings of psychology, we're going to discover how the brain puts together all the different jobs done by its different parts, so that what you finally consciously perceive is the whole picture, happening in a flowing, seamless time frame. So, to save time and resources, the brain gives different jobs to different brain parts. But to make sure you can act and interact effectively with the world, the brain hides all those separate activities and only shows you consciously the final product, the pattern and meaning the brain has ultimately interpreted from all the separate pieces of information. Now, you already know the cortex is divided into its eight lobes, four per hemisphere. You already know that the lobes are specialized for different things, but you may wonder why we need two of each kind of lobe. Well, the processing tasks of the paired lobes are different in each hemisphere. For instance, the left temporal lobe, as you know from Wernicke's area, is specialized for processing language sounds. The right temporal lobe is specialized for processing music sounds. So, both temporal lobes process sound. But the left hemisphere temporal lobe is best at making sense of speech sounds, whereas the right hemisphere temporal lobe is better at making sense of music sounds. Again, these subspecializations by different parts of the brain allow maximum efficiency by letting your brain process multiple pieces of information about the world simultaneously. Now notice I said that the opposite hemispheric lobes are best at one or another kind of subspecialty. But think of the hemispheres as an old married couple. By necessity, partners tend to fall into roles that help them divide and conquer to meet the daily demands of life. The partner who's better at cooking tends to do most of it and do it well. The partner who's better at changing the oil tends to do that. But if one partner gets sick or hurt, the other can fill in to get the job done. And probably not as well. The brain hemispheres do the same thing. If the left side analog is damaged, the right side can help out some, but it doesn't do as good a job as the original. It's just an assistant, and hopefully plasticity will kick in and the damaged area will recover some of the lost function. The take home message here is that hemispheric specializations are ideal for maximum efficiency of processing, but there is some flexibility when damage and environmental pressures demand it. Now. Something related to the hemispheres that is not flexible is the function of contralaterality. First the word. Contra means other and lateral means side. Your brain is set up so that the right side of your body is controlled by the left or other side of your brain and vice versa. One idea from evolutionary psychology is that we're designed this way so that when we fight, say we're right-handed, the side of our brain responsible for that dominant side of our body is away from the fight and relatively protected because it's less likely to be facing our opponent and potential damage. But the question here now becomes if the two sides of our body are controlled by different sides of our brain then how does the right brain know what the left brain is doing? How is it that we never notice this separation of control and instead our experience and control just seem smooth and seamless? Well, the two hemispheres constantly talk to each other and share information via a brain structure called the corpus callosum. This is basically an information superhighway that connects the two hemispheres. The basis of your ability to integrate the specialized information from all the different parts of the brain so that you experience one complete or holistic event with all the information available to your conscious awareness at once is this info sharing happening constantly across the corpus callosum. FYI, constant information sharing is also critical to healthy function in a partnership like a marriage. Just keep that in mind for later when you take that plunge. Okay, for example, with language. You know the left hemisphere is dominant for linear language processing for a lot of people. You know the right hemisphere is more specialized for rhythm and creativity. It turns out that the two hemispheres have to work together then for you to understand all the parts of language, including its creative and emotional parts like jokes and sarcasm. The left brain processes the words, 
but the right brain processes the creative use of the words. So, people with right hemisphere damage often lose their ability to get jokes, or to understand when someone's being sarcastic. Now you can easily tell the difference in my meaning when I say, yeah, right, versus, yeah, right. A person with right hemisphere damage would likely interpret only the literal word meanings and therefore would take both phrases as conveying agreement. That's inconvenient. Now, there's another really interesting kind of brain damage that has told us a ton about both hemispheric specialization and contralaterality. And this, in turn, has an effect on our cognitive processing, the way we think. When the two hemispheres can't talk to each other, it interferes with our normal thinking processes. So in rare cases, again, most often from severe epilepsy, a person will have to undergo a surgery in which the corpus callosum is severed completely. This is done in order to stop the electrical misfirings from traveling from one hemisphere to the other and triggering a grand mal seizure. In these cases, the two hemispheres are still carrying out their specialized functions and their contralateral control, but they can no longer tell each other what they're doing. No more corpus callosum information highway. These patients are often referred to as split brain. The severing of the corpus callosum allows us to create situations with these patients in the lab where we can clearly isolate each hemisphere and measure what it's doing. And since that information can't be shared with the other hemisphere, we can tell what that hemisphere is not doing. This is much easier to understand if you actually see a split brain patient in action. And there happens to be an excellent YouTube of just such a patient willing to share his experiences with you. Go to the link provided and meet Joe. He's going to show you left and right hemisphere specialization for language versus pictures, as well as contralaterality in action. There will be a test. Be sure and watch the video. Thanks and gig'em!